Father God, thank you so much for a beautiful winter day, and thank you for every person in this room. I know you placed them here on purpose, and it's not a mistake. Um, I know that you are going to be speaking to our minds and our hearts today. Let us just listen and be open to learning something new. Please be with Laura as she teaches us, and fill her with your spirit and give her the words to say. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, how are you guys doing? Good. I'm gonna set this mic aside really quick. Okay. Um, welcome, welcome, welcome. If I have not introduced myself to you, I see a couple of new faces here in the room this afternoon. Welcome to Young Professionals. My name is Laura. I am the associate director here for Young Professionals, um, and it is just an honor and a privilege to serve alongside you guys and just to be here to. Um, truly just speak what is on my heart, what God is been speaking to me and teaching me through this series. Um, and so last week we uh, started our series on Not Forsaken, um, Finding Freedom as Sons and Daughters of a Perfect Father. Um, I loved how the, the, the main point that we took away last week was that no matter what has happened between your earthly father, that our perfect heavenly father has not forsaken us that God has not forsaken us, he has not abandoned us, he has not left us, never has he. Um, He loves you, he loves you, he loves you, and he's there for you every single day, through every season, every circumstance, the highs and lows. Amen? Amen. So uh, we are going into week two of this series, and I have a couple questions. You know how I love to ask you guys questions. I have a couple questions to ask you guys. Um... What would you say is the most important thing about yourself? You can shout out some answers. What's the most important thing about yourself? Christ. Christ. That's like the G. But I mean, hey, that's not a wrong answer. No wrong answers, right? Uh, anybody else? Listening? Is that what you said? Okay. I love it. Um, okay, so now what comes to your mind when you think about God? What comes to your mind when you think about God? I'm going to walk over here to the whiteboard. I'm going to write down some of your guys' answers. So what comes to your mind when you think about God? Love it, love it, love it. Confusion, love, infinite, everlasting, everything, mercy, serving, light, mystery, limitless, intercessor, life, righteous, truth, Jesus, and creator. I love that. I love it. Um, every month our leadership team has a meeting where we meet together on a monthly basis to kind of recap what's happened over the past month and um, to talk about what's coming up within the ministry and just to, like, plan and to meet and to touch base with each other. And so one of the questions that I love to ask the leadership team is either, hey, how did you see God work in the ministry? 
or how have you seen God in your life over the past month? How do you see God? What, what has he revealed to himself about you? So this last month, um, some of the responses I got were, um, I've seen him as a potter where he's molding me. Um, he was relational. He's present. He's trustworthy. And for me, for me, I said he was near but distant. That's how I kind of viewed him over the past month, past year. Can anyone relate to those? Yeah? Yeah. So here is um, our title for today, the most important thing about you. A.W. Tozer says, what comes into our mind when we think about God is the most important thing about us. Again, what comes into our minds when we think about God is the most important thing about us. And so we have a list of words that y'all have come up with over there. Louis Giglio says that if we have a flawed view of who God is, then our life is going to be flawed. Can you guys agree to that? Yeah. Colossians 1.16 says, all things were made by him and for him. Were made by him and for him. You were made by God and for God. And since we were made by and for him, our heart is going to search for the God who we were made for by and for. If our heart is searching, who is it that we're looking for? Confusion, love, mystery, intercessor, Jesus, the creator. Who is it that we're looking for? And where are we looking? What void are we trying to fill? Let's read Acts 17. 25 through 28. I believe it's printed on your sheet in the Passion Translation, which is one of the translations I love, the translations, along with the Amplified. The Amplified is super weird. <laughs> but I love the Passion Translation, okay? Um, Acts 17, verses 25 through 28. It says, He supplies life and breath and all things to every living, every living being. He doesn't lack a thing that we mortals could supply for him, for he has all things and everything he needs. From one man, Adam, he made every man and woman and every race of humanity, and he spread us over all the earth. He set the boundaries of people and nations, determining their appointed times in history. Verse 27. He has done this so that every person would long for God, feel their way to him. And find him, for he is the God who is easy to discover. For he is the God who is easy to discover. He did this so that every person would long for God, feel their way to him, and find him. Again, A.W. Tozer says, We tend by secret law of the soul to move toward our mental image of God. we tend to move toward our mental image of God. And so if this is our image of God, of what we think about when we think about God, we're going to move towards that. And if we're going to move towards that mental image of God, then we want to have a right mental image, right? We want to have an accurate image of who he is, the true picture of who our God is. So again, the question is, what is your view of God? What do you think about when you think about God? What comes into our minds when we think about God is the most important thing about us. So this is going to get fun. <laughs> it's kind of funny. In his book, Louis Giglio shares with us all these kinds of views that we may or may not have about God. And so I'm going to read a couple of them here, and they're just hilarious because I can relate to some of them, and I'm sure you guys can too. So I'm going to come back over here and write on um, the board the motley crew of God that Louis Giglio came up with. So, some people hold a mental image of God that looks something like an old man upstairs, right? Grandpa God. <laughs> grandpa God. Which is funny. Think about my grandpa, and he always has candy in his pocket. 
<laughs> um, then there's scorekeeper God, right? Scorekeeper God is going to keep score of all of our wrongs. The do's and don'ts. If you go to church, you get one point. If you swear at the guy on the freeway who cuts you off, you lose two points. Then there's the cosmic force of God. I have so many friends, acquaintances, I would say, that relate to God as like the universe. The universe is speaking to me today. Like, okay. All right. Cool. All right. There's an angry God. Right? Who loves to push people around and make them pay for what they're doing. The concierge God, kind of like the Alexa or Siri of our generation. The stained glass God. This is the highbrow and stoic God. This God uses complex theological words and prefers things buttoned up and proper. The hipster God? Yeah, super relevant, part barista, part Bible scholar. The buddy God? Hey, what's up, bro? I remember in life group, <laughs> I opened up a prayer like that one time. I was like, hey, God, uh, what's up? <laughs> um, there's the me God, right? The me God who says, uh, sure, we don't overtly say I'm God, but we act like it. And then there's the buffet God, who pretty much covers all of these. And then there's the no God God. No God God. So he goes on to kind of give us this overview of how many of us can see God and what our mental what our mental image of God may or may not be. So it's likely that we have a little bit of one or more of these views into our thinking of who God is. Am I right? I mean, sometimes I think he's totally the scorekeeper. <laughs> or he can be angry at me for something I've done, or he's super hipster, or he's my buddy. Um, or Grandpa God, right? He has a white flowing beard and white hair. Isn't that how we all think of who God is? Um, but here's the good news. God wants you to know who he is. He wants you to know who he is. More than you want to find God, God wants to be found by you. Isn't that awesome? God wants to be found by you. How many of you are star people? Love looking at the stars. How many of you, uh, how many of you are nature people? Love being out in nature. I love hikes. Animal lovers? I could not watch that clip that Pastor Lynn showed. It's like, no! No! <laughs> Animal lovers, um, you love the mountains, you love waterfalls, you love the ocean, um, you know, sunrises and sunsets, everything, right? Everything about everything that's surrounded by us is super amazing and incredible. Open your Bible to, um, with me to Romans 1, verse 20. Bless you. Romans 1, verse 20. I'm going to read off the cash. It says, opposition to truth cannot be excused on the basis of ignorance, because from the creation of the world, the invisible quality of of God's nature have been made visible, such as his eternal power and transcendence. He has made his wonderful attributes easily perceived, for seeing the visible makes us understand the invisible. So then, this leaves everyone without excuse. Isn't that good? Romans 1, verse 20. He has made his wonderful attributes easily perceived, the mountains, the sunrise, the sunset, the stars. So then this leaves everyone without excuse. I love how nature shows us that indeed there is a God, a creative and intelligent and a beautiful God that we can see evidence of and his fingerprints all around us. 
And it's funny because one of my friends a couple days ago sent me this picture from a couple couple ago. And I was reading and preparing for this. Lo and behold, God speaks and shows this. And it's in the book here. This is Galaxy GNZ 11, the farthest galaxy away that we've ever seen. Y'all, this is 13.4 billion light years away. Billion light years away. I mean, look how beautiful that is. Incredible. Incredible. So according to Romans 1, the verse that we just read, and thanks to this galaxy and many other evidence of uh, God, people are without excuse to believe that God is God. He leaves little clues all around us for us to see who he is, for him to show us who he is, and to tell us who he is. In Hebrews 1, 1 through 3, we're reading lots of scripture today. Amen? That's good. Hallelujah. <laughs> In Hebrews 1, verses 1 through 3, Creation reveals God, but then we realize that Jesus shows us clearly who God is. Throughout our history, God has spoken to our ancestors by his prophets in many different ways. The revelation he gave them was only a fragment at a time, building one truth upon another. But to us, living in these last days, God now speaks to us openly in the language of the Son, Jesus, the appointed heir of everything. For through him, God created the panorama of all things and all time. Verse 3. The sun is the dazzling radiance of God's splendor, the exact expression of God's true nature, his mirror image. He holds the universe together and expands it by the mighty power of his spoken word. He accomplished for us the complete cleansing of sins and then took his seat on the highest throne at the right hand of his justice. So, God shows us who he is by sending his son, Jesus, as we talked about last week. When Jesus was up on the cross, he cried out, My Father, why have you forsaken me? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? God shows us who he is by sending Jesus to us. In Jesus, God is saying, Here I am. Here is the most accurate picture I can give you of what I am like. So if we can see Jesus through God and God through Jesus, the most amazing thing that Jesus teaches us about who God is, that God is our Father. He is a Father to us. 189 times in the four Gospels alone, Jesus teaches us that God is a Father. And Louis Giglio says here, The number one image of God that Jesus paints for us is this, that God is a father. That's what we need to hold on to. That's what we need to think about when we think about God. That the most important thing about us when we think about God is that we see God as our father. And that we can find true freedom as loved sons and daughters of our perfect heavenly father. Amen? Amen. All right, so we are going to jump into our table discussion questions, and then we will uh, wrap up and close up. Ready, go. Go.